Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 2. In the last video, we started talking about redox reactions, and I told you that these are especially important for applications involving fuels and batteries, because many redox reactions are especially exothermic, so they give off a lot of heat we can use to power engines and other machines. For that reason, we really want to understand the details of redox reactions very well, and we started last time by balancing a few redox reactions, including this one. But it turns out that some redox reactions are even slightly more tricky than this one, and today I want to tell you why. Once you can balance reactions like the ones we'll talk about today, you'll know how to work with the most complicated reactions we'll see in this course. To begin, let's try balancing this reaction, using the technique we learned about in the last video. As you might remember, the first step is to determine the charge on each of the atoms in the compounds. We learned some rules for figuring out the charges last time, and rule 2 tells us that oxygens in molecules have a charge of minus 2, so that takes care of all the oxygens. Next, rule 3 says that hydrogens in a molecule have a charge of plus 1, so that includes the hydrogen in the bisulfite. Rule 4 says that the charges of atoms in a neutral molecule must add up to 0. There's just one neutral molecule, the manganese oxide. To make the charges add to zero, the manganese must have a charge of plus four. Finally, rule five tells us that the charges on atoms in a polyatomic ion must total to give the overall charge on the ion. So for example, there are four oxygens in the permanganate ion. Each has a charge of minus two for a total of minus eight. The permanganate has an overall charge of minus one, so the manganese must have a charge of plus seven. In the bisulfite ion, there are three oxygens, so these have a total charge of minus six. There's also a hydrogen with a charge of plus one. So, in order for the charges to add up to minus one, the sulfur must have a charge of positive four. Finally, the sulfate contains four oxygens, so these have a total charge of minus eight. And the overall charge on the sulfate ion is negative two. That means the sulfur must have a charge of plus six. Now that we've done that, we can see that the charges on the manganese and the sulfur change during the reaction. The manganese goes from having a charge of plus seven to plus four. That means it must gain electrons. As you might remember from last time, there's a memory aid that goes, Leo the lion says grr. The grr tells us that when an atom gains electrons, we say that it's being reduced. So the manganese is reduced, and meanwhile the sulfur's charge changes from plus four to plus six, so it's losing electrons. When an atom loses electrons, we say that it's being oxidized. Now we can finish balancing the reaction. Step two tells us to separate this reaction into two smaller half reactions. One involves only the reactant and product of the reduction, and the other involves the reactant and product in the oxidation reaction. Next is step three, in which we balance all the elements other than oxygen and hydrogen in each reaction. In the reduction reaction, the only element other than oxygen and hydrogen is manganese. The manganese is already balanced, so we'll move on to the other reaction. In the oxidation, the only element aside from oxygen and hydrogen is the sulfur, and this one's already balanced too. So that means we can move on to step four. This tells us to balance the oxygen atoms in each reaction by adding water molecules to one side. In the reduction reaction, there are four oxygens on the left and two on the right. So we'll add two water molecules on the right to balance them out. In the oxidation reaction, there are three oxygens on the left and four on the right. So we need to add one water molecule on the left side. Now that we've done that, the oxygens are balanced in each reaction. In step five, we balance the hydrogen atoms in each reaction by adding H plus ions to one side. In the reduction, there are four hydrogens on the right and none on the left. So we'll add four hydrogen plus ions on the left side. In the oxidation reaction, there are three hydrogens on the left and none on the right. So we add three H plus ions to the right side. Now, all the elements are balanced, which means we're almost done. 
But as we saw in the last video, the charges might not be balanced. Let's find out if they are. In the reduction reaction, there are four hydrogen ions and a permanganate ion on the left side, so the charge on that side is a total of plus three. Meanwhile, there's a neutral manganese oxide molecule and two neutral water molecules on the right. So the charge on the right side is zero. In order to balance the charges, step six tells us to add electrons to the reaction. In this case, we'll need to add three electrons to the left side. Now we'll try the oxidation reaction. There's a water molecule and a bisulfite ion on the left, which gives a total charge of minus one. On the right, there's a sulfate ion and three H plus ions for a total charge of plus one on the right. In order to balance the charges, we need to add two electrons to the right side. We're almost ready to recombine the two half reactions to get our overall reaction back. But before we do, we need to be careful about the electrons we just added. As we saw in the last video, we can't have any leftover electrons in our reaction after we recombine them. Right now, there are three electrons on the left in the reduction reaction and two on the right in the oxidation. We need the electrons to cancel out, so in step seven, we'll multiply each reaction by a factor so that the electrons are equal on both sides. We'll multiply the first reaction by two and the second one by three, which gives us these reactions. Notice that there are six electrons on each side, so these will cancel out when we add the reactions together. Let's do that now. As I mentioned, the six electrons will cancel out. Notice that there are also eight H plus ions on the left in the top reaction and nine on the right in the bottom one. Eight of those will cancel out, leaving just one hydrogen on the right side. Also, there are three water molecules on the left and four on the right, so three of the water molecules will cancel out on each side. Now we'll add the two reactions together. We end up with two permanganate ions and three bisulfite ions on the left, and two manganese oxide molecules, one water molecule, three sulfate ions, and a hydrogen ion on the right. The reaction is balanced now, and this is the process that you learned in the last video. But there might be one last step for us to do. Notice that one of the products in this reaction is the H plus ion. You might remember from our discussion of acids and bases several videos ago that H plus ions are what makes most solutions acidic. That means that if this reaction were taking place in an aqueous solution, the solution would be acidic because of the H plus ion. But it turns out that redox reactions can take place in either acid or base. So what happens if we make this solution basic? For example, we could do that by making this reaction take place in a basic buffer solution. If we do the reaction in a base, we can't have H plus ions in the solution. So to get rid of them, we'll perform our very last step, which is to add multiples of this reaction in which hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions combine to form water so that the H plus ions all cancel out. In this case, there's one H plus ion, so we'll add one copy of this reaction, which makes the hydrogen ion cancel out. When we add the reactions, it gives us a final result of two permanganate ions, three bisulfite ions, and one hydroxide ion on the left and two manganese dioxide molecules, three sulfates, and two waters on the right. So that's our balanced reaction. That was a lot of work, so to make sure we didn't make any mistakes, we should check to make sure that both the charges and the elements are balanced. I'll do the charges first. There are two permanganate ions, three bisulfites, and a hydroxide on the left, for a total charge of minus six on the left side. On the right, there are two neutral manganese dioxides, two water molecules, and three sulfate ions for a total charge of minus six on the right, which is exactly what we had on the other side. Now we'll check the elements. There are two manganese atoms on the left and two on the right. Next, let's check the oxygen. There are eight oxygens from the permanganates, nine from the bisulfite ions, and one for the hydroxide, for a total of 18. 
On the right side, there are four oxygens from the manganese oxide, 12 from the sulfate ions, and two from the water molecules, for a total of 18 on that side. So the oxygens balance. Next, there are three hydrogens in the bisulfite ions, and one in the hydroxide, for a total of four. There are also four hydrogens from the water molecules on the right side. Finally, there are three sulfur atoms on the left, and also three on the right. So, all of the elements in our reaction balance out. Reactions like this are among the most complex ones we can balance, and you can see that it takes some time. However, this process becomes much faster the more you practice. So let's try one final example. This reaction looks a bit similar to the last one we did. We still start with permanganate and bisulfite, and one of the products is the sulfate ion. However, this time the other product is different. We will balance this one using the same procedure we used in the last reaction. So remember, step one is to find the charge on each atom. We already did that in the last reaction for the atoms in the permanganate ion, the bisulfite ion, and the sulfate ion, so we'll just use those results again here. So now we just need to find the charges on the atoms in this ion. We know that rule 2 tells us that oxygens have a charge of minus 2. And rule 5 tells us that the charges on this polyatomic ion must add up to negative 2. That means the manganese must have a charge of plus 6. If you check the charges that change between the left and right sides of this reaction, you'll see that the manganese went from a charge of plus 7 to plus 6, so it must have gained an electron. That means the manganese was reduced. Meanwhile, the charge on the sulfur goes from plus 4 to plus 6. That means sulfur lost two electrons, which is oxidation. Now we move on to step two, in which we split the reaction into two half reactions, one for the reduction and one for the oxidation. Now we do step three, in which we balance all the elements aside from the oxygen and hydrogen. In this case, the other elements are manganese and sulfur, and these are already balanced. In step four, we add water molecules to the reactions in order to balance the oxygen. In the reduction reaction, there are four oxygens on both sides, so we don't need to change that reaction. In the oxidation, there are three oxygens in the bisulfite and four in the sulfate, so we need to add a water molecule on the left side. Now for step five, in which we balance the hydrogens by adding H plus ions. There are no hydrogens in the reduction reaction, so we can skip that one. There are three hydrogens on the left in the oxidation reaction, and none on the right, so we'll add three H plus ions to the right side. Finally, in step six, we'll add the electrons to balance the charges. In the reduction reaction, there's a charge of minus one on the left and minus two on the right, so we need to add one electron on the left side. In the oxidation reaction, the charge is minus one on the left and plus one on the right, so we need to add two electrons on the right side. For our last step, we need to make the electrons cancel out, so we'll multiply the reduction reaction by two. That way, there are two electrons in each reaction, and these will cancel out. When we add the two reactions, we get two permanganate ions, a water molecule, and a bisulfite ion on the left side, and two manganate ions, a sulfate ion, and three H plus ions on the right side. This reaction is balanced, and as you can see, there are H plus ions on the right, so this reaction must be taking place in an acidic solution. But what if it was in a basic solution? In that case, we'd have one more step to do. We need to add a multiple of this reaction in order to make the hydrogens cancel out. Since there are three hydrogen ions, we'll add three of these reactions. That makes the hydrogens drop out. Notice that one of the water molecules also cancels out the water that was already in the reaction. When we add the reactions, we get two permanganate ions, a bisulfite ion, and three hydroxide ions on the left, and two manganate ions, a sulfate ion, and two water molecules on the right. The last thing we can do 
is check to be sure that the charges and the elements balance. On the left, the ions have charges that add up to minus 6, and that's also what we have on the right. So, so far, so good. As far as the elements, we have two manganese ions on both sides. For the oxygens, there are eight from the permanganate, three from the bisulfite, and three from the hydroxide, for a total of 14 oxygens on the left. On the right, there are eight from the manganate ions, four from the sulfate, and two from the water molecules, which gives us 14 overall on the right, just like we had on the other side. There's also a total of four hydrogens on the left side and four on the right, and there's one sulfur on each side. That means that both the charges and the elements are balanced in this reaction. So we're finally finished. Well, that's enough for today. You now know how to balance some pretty tough reactions. We'll get some practice at this during class and on the homework. Now that we can balance these reactions, we're ready to talk about how batteries work, which is a major application of redox reactions. We'll do that in the next couple of videos, so I hope you'll join me for those. Until then, have a good week! <laughs>